you or anyone you know have attention deficit disorder? Yeah, my friend Kaylee does. I know someone. Yeah, a friend. Yeah. Yeah, my school. This is a whole bunch of them. Like in class, they always get kicked out of class for like no reason. A whole bunch of my friends in my school got ADD. Uh, yeah, I have a few friends like that. My friend over here, she has um, a little bit of ADHD. <laughs> Makes everything funner because they're always hyper and happy. Um, yeah, my little two cousins, they have that. Well, my neighbor has that. A lot of people. Yes, myself. Um, yeah, I actually have a couple of friends with ADD and ADHD. Like, you wouldn't really know that they had it until they actually told you. You actually think, that, oh, they're just really talkative or they're really cool. Yes, I do. It's my friend Budget right here. We love him, I'm sorry. and his his, his his disabilities do not affect us. We, we treat him like one of us. They get a little hyper in class. You know what I mean? They get in trouble a lot. She's not very good at concentrating, and she doesn't get really good grades in school. And I don't know if that's because of the ADD, but it could be. You can't concentrate as much, and it's harder to stay focused, and you, I guess you're looked down upon. It doesn't, because I don't really have a really bad case of it, but I've been told that I have some case of it. It just makes him, it makes him a, his own person, unique in his own way. Well, it might affect him a little bit, but I mean, you can't tell from the first glance, or even though, when you get to know them, you can't really tell. Being around them, I know how they act, and I know how they are, so I have to like, just control my anger, like, a carry calm down, like, he has a problem. It's like, very difficult. If they take their medication, they're usually fine, but you can tell when they haven't, they get a little rowdy. They have to take medication every day and it's like a big part of their lives, but they have it under control. It really doesn't affect them because they really act like normal kids and they're treated like normal kids, so that lets them be happy so they can feel like normal children. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder or ADHD affects an estimated 3-5% to of the American teenage population. It is one of the most common mental illnesses in young people, with boys being three times as likely as girls to be diagnosed. Although the causes of the disorder are unknown and symptoms vary from person to person, ADHD can be best described as a persistent pattern of inattention with or without hyperactivity, as well as forgetfulness, poor impulse control or impulsivity, and distractibility. Teens and ADHD, that's what we will be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Elias. And I'm Caitlin. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith TV. TV. Our spotlight guest today, Vanessa, is a teenager who has been diagnosed with ADHD when she was eight years old. We'll hear from her a little later on in the show, as well as meet our studio guests. But first, let's go back to the teens on the street who will talk with us about some common misconceptions concerning those with ADHD. Let's check it out. Do you think there are misconceptions surrounding people with ADD or ADHD? What are they? I think that people think that they're like crazy but it's not like that at all. They just like have some, like a difference. Yes, they get judged worse than they um, should be. I know some kids that have ADHD and they're really like great kids. They just, you know, get a little crazy sometimes. Me, I know how and when to get it crumped and when to cut it out. So somebody with ADD, it might be like kind of harder for them to do it. I would say maybe uh, focusing on schoolwork um, and maybe just I guess just in general focus. Yeah, if they don't have medication, I guess like concentrating could be a big concern for them. I guess just like paying attention in school and doing like their schoolwork the way they should. I don't think most people are educated on this topic. I think everyone's aware of it now and uh, they kind of, they can deal with it. If you chilled with an ADHD person, you wouldn't tell the difference between them and somebody that didn't. It's nothing different about it, it's just, they're just a little bit more wired than us. They're all the same, they're the same people as us. Yeah, so obviously, you know, kids with ADHD are really no different. They just may have a little bit more trouble concentrating or be a little bit more hyper than most people. Mm -hmm. It's true that there are many misconceptions that people have about ADHD. Chief among them is that having ADHD means the person is undisciplined or lazy. Historically, society blamed the parents for problems of mental health like neurosis, schizophrenia, and autism. Now that those theories have been discredited, ADHD is considered a real disease with a scientific pathology. Although the nature-nurture debate is still going on, ADHD has become a more respected disorder than it was originally believed to be by society. Well, let's see what our studio guests have to say about this topic. Okay, they are Jenna, Chris, Kira, Kalachi, Bill, and Mike. All right, so I have three questions for you guys. First of all, do you know anyone who has ADHD? And if so, how does it affect them? 
And if that's the case too, how does their ADHD affect you guys? Well, my brother's best friend has ADHD and I, it doesn't really affect me personally, but mm -hmm. sometimes when he comes over and if his medicine starts to wear off, we'll see a little bit of hyperness. Like he'll start to giggle a lot and he, his <laughs> laugh is infectious, so everyone else laughs around him. But other than that, he, he's had it for a while, so it's very under control. Yeah, one of my best friends, she has ADHD, and like, she won't take her meds often, so like, let's say I'm telling her a story, like one or two words will catch her attention, and then she'll like start spacing off, spacing out while I'm telling a story, then she'll, <laughs> then she'll ask me to repeat it. And it's not like it bugs me or anything, but just like once in a while, if I'm tired or something, it'll get on my nerves. Yeah, I, my sister has um, ADD, actually, and um, it's, it's really hard on our family because it's really, um, really intense, I guess you would say. It's just hard to get, to get going in the morning. You know, like you say, we have to leave at 9, and at 9.30, she's on MySpace, and it's like, okay, you have to repeat things over and over, and it's, it's kind of been hard on our family. Mm -hmm. um, like Phil, my friend, she also had ADHD, and sometimes she forgot to take her um, medication, and she'll be a little bit hyper, but I'm, like, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, my friend, uh, he was diagnosed in maybe like third or fourth grade, and it's really an under control thing, and it really doesn't affect me at all, except it really gets out of control when he gets angry. Mm -hmm. right, right. Well, I'm probably the odd man, Alfie, because I have ADHD, but when I'm around my friends, they don't really know I have it, so I can say that it's probably under control. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I have a really great story. My best, <laughs> my best friend has ADHD. And the first time I met him was my first day of sixth grade, and we were in math class, and he's sitting behind me. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm sitting there listening to my teacher, and all of a sudden I feel like vibration. I'm like, what is that? So I turn around, and he's, you know, tapping, fidgeting around. So I was like, oh, excuse me, could you please not do that? So he's like, oh, yeah, of course, I'm sorry. So five minutes later, my desk starts shaking again. So I turn around, and I'm like, you're doing it again. Can you please stop? He was like, oh, yeah, of course, sorry course, like another 30 seconds after that, I feel like vibration. I turn, I scream at him, I'm like, stop it, you have to stop. And so, you know, ever since then, we've been best friends. No. So, <laughs> you know, um, ADHD can be a really big problem for some people, and obviously you can be really hyper, but in this case, it worked out. He takes his medication, and he's totally fine. And, but he's had it since he was a child, right? Yes, definitely. And in fact, as a child, our spotlight guest, Vanessa, thought of herself as a normal kid who just had trouble paying attention in school. But through a school evaluation, it was determined that she had a more intense condition. She was then diagnosed with ADHD. Let's meet her now as she explains some of the difficulties she faces on a daily basis. And whether she feels that people who have ADHD are treated differently. You do have like these moments where you get so hyper that like you can't control it and you're trying to calm down. And it's, it's difficult at times, but I can manage with it. I'm used to it. I mean, ADHD isn't like, you can tell sometimes on someone and then sometimes you can't because there's like, there's people who are naturally hyper but they don't have it. I guess people don't get treated differently unless they know like, they're just like, oh, she's not gonna listen to you because she has ADHD. Then you start focusing on that. Someone that doesn't have ADHD has their own difficulties at times listening or trying to do something. But ADHD is just another level of just being hyper and like, it's not, I'm not saying we're not normal, but it's just, there's a lot more difficulty than a regular person. Some of the difficulties I've had is definitely not listening, not paying attention, and at times being too fidgety, trying to focus, but then you just get in that state of mind where you have to have to focus, not trying to show off my ADHD, and then you just end up dazing off in school at times, trying to listen to a teacher and having that that like hyper sugar in me, it doesn't work at all. It's just, it's not as easy as it people think it is. Oh, I definitely try to focus, try my hardest. And when I do think that, I, I get through the day or get through the class at least. Yeah, I really don't feel like people treat others differently who have ADHD, but I think that it's more of a challenge for the person who actually has it, not really the people around them kind of, because it's just like a, it's like a side thing. It's like, yeah, yeah, they might feel like, you know, awkward because they're more hyper right, or, you know, right. intense, like crazy and stuff than the other people around them. Um, so what do you guys think? Do you think that teens with ADHD are treated differently by their peers? Well, it actually depends on the type of crowd because some people would like, oh, what are you doing here? 
go away. But then you have the others like <coughs> will actually talk to you and be your friend. So just like I said, depends on the crowd who you're with. I think it depends on how extreme you have it. Um, for instance, some people like they could have it to the point where someone else would notice. But like you, um, they won't know if they meet you until you tell them like I have ADHD. That's what I was gonna say. Like I think it depends on the level of like which end of the spectrum you're at. Um, like my sister, we work at the same place, so we know a lot of the same people day to day. And sometimes they'll they'll ask me questions. They'll be like, "What is up with her? Like, what is what is different about her?" And I have to explain it to them and explain the way her mind works and how it's different. You know. Also, I think it has a lot to do with um, the person that doesn't have it, like you guys were saying. Because if someone's really, really patient, they'll just understand and they'll get through it. But if someone's like really needs to get things done really quickly all the time, they might not be able to handle the intensity that comes with ADHD. For me and my friends, it's um, you can't even realize sometimes because another problem is people just throw it around whenever they mess up. Oh, my ADD is just kicking in. Mm -hmm. And you can't even tell sometimes who has it and who is really just messing around. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, by learning how to manage their symptoms, teenagers with ADHD can tremendously benefit themselves. Therapy can teach them how to take on specific responsibilities one step at a time. This helps them become more organized and free from distraction. It can even instill independence and success in the individual. In some cases, prescription medications such as Ritalin or Adderall help to manage the chemical symptoms of ADHD. So do you think therapy or medication helps those with ADHD? That's what we asked the teens on the street. Let's check it out. I don't believe medication or therapy helps. I feel like if you have, if you have ADD, you have it, and I don't feel like you can control it because the person that I know that has ADD, is they just have it, and they can't control it. A lot of people I know with ADD, um, they they become very negative and they become they give up on themselves because they people kind of cancel them out. It's like oh something's wrong with you and I don't want to be bothered with you. And sometimes they feel as though they're not normal. So that plays on their insecurities. And I believe that they um, they go to negative things. They act out. They 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 don't want to control it because they're believing what people are telling them. Some of my friends have medication. Some go to therapy. Or some people I don't even know, they, a lot of them go to therapy and take a lot of medicine. So. Medication calms them down, it helps a lot. Well, they take medication. It just keeps it under control. Yeah, she takes medication <laughs> on occasions. <laughs> Budget deals with it with therapy. Therapy through us. Um, and herbal rehabilitation is always a great thing that he does. Well, I got a friend, um, I'm not sure if he takes Ritalin, but he does take some sort of medication. Um, I have another friend with ADD, but he doesn't really seem to use any sort of like helping ways. Like oh, I took medication for a while, it's helping me out, and then when I just start concentrating on my own, I believe in your inner self, and that's what makes you positive without the medication. Um, I actually don't take no medication or nothing, I just deal with it. Like, I never affected me, or I never noticed it affected people. ADHD medication acts as a stimulant for the brain to help teens pay attention instead of wandering from one thing to another constantly. Side effects of the drug can sometimes lead to depression and psychological dependence. Next, Vanessa shares with us her experience with medication that she was prescribed with. And talks about the support she received during her hardest moments. I can pay attention depending on like if I had the medicine or I went through therapy. I'm still struggling with it. It's not easy. like going through like the medication which doesn't do anything like it just basically got me depressed. I lost a lot of weight from it, couldn't sleep so like when my parents chose to do therapy with me and then I decided therapy was helping and then they put me back on the medicine then I just choose not to use it because it just I don't want to be depressed and then going to therapy which was good at first and then it just got, it was the same thing. So I'm still struggling and learning how to manage my ADHD. But hopefully I'll get to the point where I know how to control it. Well, my parents always helped me get through it, even when I was just like depressed. They're, they've always been there and they always make everything a lot better. So I guess every day it's that story's with them because they're always with me. Like family support and like friends who actually take the time 
and recognize that it's not as easy to deal with someone with ADHD. I've had a lot of support. It's been good, even through therapy too. It's been great. I thought it was really interesting how she said, you know, like I know this kind of sounds a little like, I don't know, kind of ignorant, I guess you could say. But um, I honestly didn't think it was that big of a deal. Like if you had it, you know, you would take medication to get over it. But it, it sounds like, from what she's saying, it sounds like it's a real struggle. I had no idea that it was, you know, that bad. So, I mean, what about you guys? Has ADHD medication affected anybody that you guys know in such a tremendous way? Well, with one of my friends, um, when she took the medicine, she lost a lot of weight. She became sort of emotionally unstable. She'd get angry quicker. She'd lose control. She wouldn't focus at all. It did more harm than help. Mm -hmm. And she eventually just got up and went to her parents and said, no more, I'm not taking it. My sister was the same way. Like, she lost a whole lot of weight and she couldn't sleep. She got, like, a little bit depressed. And even though it helped her function, it wasn't worth it for the side effects, so. Yeah, I have, like, the same story with my brother's friend who will sometimes get angry, even, like, with simple things like video games when they're playing. Like, just losing will kind of make him a little more agitated than other people. Mm -hmm. um, my friend, she was, um, um, when she was on her medication, she was angry all the time. But if, when she was off of it, they used to kick her out of class. But she was better on her medication, even though she was angry. So she stayed on her medication. I have an interesting story. Um, when we were probably in about third or fourth grade, there was this kid in our class who was, you know, really hyper and really wild. And he, he, it turns out he had ADHD. But what would happen was the teacher would give him like a rewards program, you know, like for being like good, you get a sticker, and then you get a prize at the end, and your card's filled up. He got the same kind of thing, but it was to remember to take his medication. Because he'd always be really metal, mellow in the morning, I guess, and then just really hyper in the afternoon, so he'd have to take his medication at lunch. So it was kind of cool. He had like a sticker program for taking his medication. Mm -hmm. you know, also sometimes with medication, not just with ADHD medication, but any medication for any illness, it can always have negative side effects in your body, but you know, a lot of times it's really good for people with ADHD to take it because it really can get them under control and help them lead a more quote unquote normal kind right. of life. Mm -hmm. um, ADHD affects many people, not just the teens diagnosed with the disease. Parents, teachers, tutors, doctors, and pharmacists will have a new role in the life of someone with ADHD. Environmental changes must also be made. Special education may be needed in acute cases. And behavioral therapy becomes everyone's job in a household where someone has ADHD. Despite ADHD's negative stigma, many have been able to look beyond the restrictions and embrace their unique abilities. Because after all, we're all members of the body of Christ, each unique part essential to lifting up the whole. Paul tells us this in his first letter to the Corinthians. So that there should be no division in the parts of the body, its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Next, Vanessa talks with us about how having faith and trust in God has helped her in managing her ADHD in order to be more productive in her life. Let's hear her now. When it all comes down to like faith and prayer, I definitely know deep down inside that I have God who cares and loves me and believes in me. And when nobody else does, I know he does. So it makes everything a lot easier. I came to the point where I had a, the medication was getting me depressed. And even though therapy was supposedly supposed to help, it just, it came down to my own therapy and prayer. And it turned out to help a lot. Well, I pray every night when I go to bed. That's my prayer time. And it just helped me a lot. Because, you know, when everything else goes wrong, I always recruit to God in times where you get so depressed or overwhelmed because you have the situation. You just go to him and everything just gets better. Even if it's for like 10 minutes, but it works. It uh, definitely helps in the aspect of just trying to get through every day. Because sometimes advice that people give you can't, doesn't have much impact on your life or effect. There's been times where everything, absolutely everything comes together and I just feel so down, I don't know what to do. And it's just, it's like this crash and I just go to bed and pray and then just let it all out there and cry. <laughs> Makes it better though. And as I said before, it always feels good knowing that you can pray and let some, like, put everything in somebody's hands. Yeah, I mean, 
as Vanessa was saying, sometimes when you know the medicine isn't working or doctors don't know what to tell you or your friends or family are getting really frustrated with you, it's always good to look to God and pray to Him. He's always there for you. Um, so what do you guys think? How can someone's relationship with God help them to deal with ADHD? I think prayer and faith are definitely a big part of dealing with ADHD. For my friend's mom, um, she definitely prayed. She prayed for patience for herself, for her family, and for everyone else that comes in contact with her son to help them recognize what he's going through and what their family's going through. So I think it's definitely a really important part for the people dealing with that. Yeah, I agree, because even when, like, in my personal past experience, the person is oblivious to their faith or anything, the people around them helping them is really a good thing. Yeah, I agree. Like, my friends, they aren't really that into their faith. So to compensate, I would pray for them. Like, every night I'd say, please guide them, please help them, let them stay calm, or something to that effect. Yeah, although I was diagnosed with ADHD, um, I didn't get on medications, so I don't know what it was like, but my faith is kind of strong with God. You have to think that probably helped you like deal with it mm -hmm. when you were diagnosed. Whenever we, um, whenever we had trouble with that, that one kid I was telling you about earlier who had ADHD in third and fourth grade, I went to a Catholic, uh, Catholic school, so I guess. Um, the principal would come up to us and you know, talk to us, because he was kind of wild at first. No one really knew why he was different. She would just explain to us, you know, you need to be accepting of other people, and you, you, know, you need to pray for them. I mean, that's just all you really can do, just to help them out. So how can prayer help someone who is struggling with ADHD? That's what we asked the teens on the street. Let's check it out. Prayer is it's a big thing, like I said before. Like, I'm a Christian, you know what I'm saying? I pray a lot sometimes whenever I get a chance. My life's not right with God, but when I pray, it helps a lot. You just gotta have faith. Um, I guess just they like pray to God that they can like be a normal part of society. Uh, just pray that they'll get better and that I, like medication and like therapy will work out for the best. They'll just know that um, no one can love them no better, no more than their God. Well, I was my God, I'm Christian. No one can love them no more than that. And so once they, they're confident in that and they love him enough and really fixate themselves on their religion, then they'll be just fine. I think faith can help them get, get over it, maybe even like um, forget about it and um, I don't know, accept, accept it or embrace it. So just look to God for the answer. It's part of life and you just accept how you're made. So definitely everyone agrees that faith is a really important part of your life and especially for people with ADHD. Do you guys have anything else to add? That's a really great point, some of the things they were saying. I mean, prayer really helped my family, especially my mom. Like with all the frustration, it's been going on 15 years, you know, with school and, and all the hard things we've been through, but um, it's definitely helped my family a lot. And I believe if you have ADHD, you're not alone in it because God always has your back and he'll always be there for you and pray any chance you get. Right. Also pray for patience because you might encounter someone and you just might think, I, I don't know if I can handle this, but you will. Yeah, you know, definitely patience is a virtue. And when I was younger, I was actually in preschool. Um, there was this girl and I mean, I was really young. I was like five and she was bouncing off the walls, out of control, and she was really, really annoying at the time. And I didn't know how to handle her, I didn't know what to do, and my mom was just like, you know, you really need to befriend her and teach her the way to be. And later on we found out that she had ADHD. Um, and you know, at the time I didn't really realize, like, oh, my faith is helping me with this, but now I look back and I realize, you know, God helps me to be a good person, and through that I was able to befriend her and try, and, like, try to show her the right way to be and not be so, you know, intense and crazy all the time. Yeah, like a few years ago, um, I met this girl and we became friends. So I called her and I was having a really bad day and so I called her to tell her about it. So as I was talking, she started playing piano. And I asked her, what are you doing? She was like, oh, oh, sorry, were you talking? I was like, yeah. And so then I kept talking, so, so then she was like, oh, okay. So I kept talking and she did it again. And I had just met her and I was getting really angry. So I was like, are you gonna listen to me or not? And it went back and forth until finally I just hung up. Later on, I realized, I found out she had ADHD. So then I felt really bad. So I was like, I'm sorry for doing that. I didn't know. And she was like, no, don't worry, it's okay. 
So then afterwards, like every other time I'd call her, she would keep doing the same thing. So I would have to ask God, like, please give me patience to deal with this. Because she was a good friend of mine, and I didn't want to just stop being friends with her because of this. Yeah. My faith has definitely helped me a lot, like personally, with, with my experience with my sister. You know, sometimes, like, she's having a rough day, and I'm having a rough day, and we get into a conversation, and I just lose the patience with her. And I have to, you know, step back and take a breath and say, God, please give me the strength. And okay, let's start from, you know, let's have this conversation. Let's figure it out. So it, it definitely helps me a lot to rely on God. Dr. Edward Hallowell of the Hallowell Center for Cognitive and Emotional Health best describes ADHD as a way of life. He says, The human experience of ADHD is more than just a collection of symptoms. It's a way of living. Before the syndrome is diagnosed, that way of living may be filled with pain and misunderstanding. After the diagnosis is made, one often finds new possibilities and a chance for real change. How does ADHD affect you or someone you know? We'd like to hear from you. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And we'll leave you today with this final thought from Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings. In all your ways, be mindful of Him and He will make straight your paths. So keep the faith and stay close to God. Lean on Him when you or someone you know is having a difficult time coping with their ADHD. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless. Thank you.